Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmach, and I'm glad to present for you the new episode of our daily wrap-up series. Russian disinformation is gaining momentum. As a journalist, I see more and more false reports in the media that work in favor of Russia. And if it naturally for the Russian mass media, the huge amount of misinformation in the Ukrainian and foreign mass media is still disturbing. Today I want to talk about a little how Russia loves and knows how to act in order to spread messages that are beneficial for them. First of all, I will talk a little about the reasons. If you don't know, last week the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shaigu, appointed Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasimov as the commander of the Joint Group of Troops in Ukraine. The reshuffling of generals in their headquarters is already common for the Kremlin. No one from the Russian military can cope with the task of achieving any military goals, only terrorist ones. So now the Russian troops will be led by Gerasimov. This is the same military man who is the author of the mythical or real Gerasimov doctrine. The doctrine redefines the modern concept of interstate conflict and puts warfare on a par with political, economic, informational, humanitarian and other non-military activities. And that is why we should expect not only missile and military attacks, as was the case in the Dnipro, but also informational dumping and other ways of influencing Ukrainians and Europeans. They will intensify their tactics. On the one hand, they will abandon acts of terror because they need to strike at the civilian population and disorientate people, intimidate them, to get them to protest. They will hit the civilian population and people will get scared and protest accordingly. But this is not work. On the contrary, everyone is against Russia, against aggression. They do not understand this and stupidly carry out. On the other hand, positions are being strengthened at the expense of Herasimov in terms of the formation of more powerful units of the Russian troops. He is now trying to do the task of Putin, which was accepted as a collegium of the Ministry of Defense. This is the formation through a new mobilization of new divisions, army corps. What's more, even before the official appointment of Gerasimov at the end of December, the Institute for the Study of War wrote in its report that Putin was transferring responsibility for failures in the war against Ukraine. After all, the Russian Federation has not achieved any successes since the summer and has only retreated. However, let's return to the information pressure. Last week there was increased activity in the production of fakes and manipulations, in particular due to the situation with the city of Solodar. At the same time, this trend is also connected with the strategic goals of the Russian Federation – to influence Ukrainians and shake society from the inside in order to create a soft ground for the capture of Ukraine. The Kremlin still believes that they will be greeted here with flowers. Probably pro-Russian politicians spread this thesis in Moscow. For example, former Ukrainian member of parliament Viktor Medvedchuk, who was exchanged for Ukrainian prisoners. The days before, he published an article in the Russian media Izvestia about the alleged anatomy of the modern military confrontation between Ukraine and Russia, as well as about the role of the West in this war. Of course, he started talking again about the fact that Ukrainians want peace. But for the most part, his messages repeat the thesis of Russian propaganda and their distribution has the same goal – to justify Russia's aggression in Ukraine, explain it by the so-called historical justice, to create the appearance that Ukraine is not complete without Russia and its culture, to devalue the struggle of the Ukrainian people for their statehood. Don't you ever read obsolete books written by yesterday's treacherous politicians? Finally put a bold historical cross on Medvedchuk. He is an absolute and empty past. Mikhail Podolyak, advisor to the president of Ukraine on Twitter. But you know, it's not for nothing that Otto von Bismarck said that there are never so many lies as during the war, after the hunt and before the elections. Therefore, it is worth trusting only official and verified sources, as well as truthful, not Russian journalists. UATV gives you this advice. And by the way, Putin's spokesman Peskov also advises you. At the same time, all necessary messages for the Kremlin are trying to be spread through anonymous telegram channels or paid experts. Among propagandist statements, you can hear it. Sanctions hurt the West more than Russia, military and weakens the state that provided it. And the EU or NATO or the West are weak and will soon fall apart. Ukrainian refugees undermine the internal stability of the countries that receive them. Ukraine will lose. All of this is lie and disinformation. Ukraine will win and every day more and more people know it, even in the Kremlin. 
Britain has announced anew the largest supply of weapons to Ukraine. It includes 14 Challenger 2 tanks, 30 guns, AS-90, 100 pieces of armored vehicles, including the Bulldog APC, dozens of unmanned aerial vehicles, 100 southern artillery shells, 100 advanced missiles, spare parts for supporting Ukrainian tanks and armored vehicles. Today, there is a good example from the UK. A new package of defense assistance has been announced. Exactly what we need. Tanks, other armored vehicles, artillery. What we discussed with Prime Minister Sunak. I thank you, Rishi. I thank every Briton for the tangible and timely support. Let me remind you that earlier Poland announced the supply of Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, although this decision has yet to be supported by Germany. However, already on Friday there will be another meeting in the Rammstein format, and we expect an announcement about the transfer of a larger number of tanks. After all, Ukraine's war against the Russian occupiers is increasingly becoming an artillery war, and we need exactly this type of weaponry. In parallel with the USA, the European partners transferred to Ukraine all the artillery of the 155th NATO caliber. They effectively strengthened Ukrainian troops in continuous artillery duels. Let me remind you that at the end of the year, in an interview with the economist, Valery Zaluzhny gave specific figures on how much equipment the armed forces of Ukraine need to win back all the territories. He noted that now Ukraine needs 300 tanks, from 600 to 700 armored vehicles and 500 howitzers. If this amount of equipment is given by their partners, then, Zaluzhny noted, it is quite possible to go to the border of February 23. We have various type of 155 mm artillery. We have already been promised the Marder and Bradley fighting vehicles. We also have the Irish T air defense systems, and we will have the Patriots after our troops are trained. We also have anti ship missiles like harpoons and so on. That is, we have many modern weapons of the NATO standard. I am sure that we will get tanks, fighters, and weapons with a range of 300 kilometers. Alexei Reznikov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine, in an interview with the BBC. I will note that the provision of weapons and equipment to Ukraine helps the NATO countries themselves. After all, they are getting rid of older equipment and now there is room for more modern technologies. Let me remind you that hundreds of tanks and dozens of Soviet-made aircraft have already been delivered to Ukraine, as well as a thousand armored personal carriers and 95 rocket launchers. These are the calculations of the Bloomberg Agency, the agency referring to the Dutch analytical project Oryx and the statements of supporters of Ukraine, names the main types of weaponry already delivered or promised to Kyiv. This figure includes armored vehicles, artillery and military aircraft. The largest number among mobile infantry vehicles, Ukraine received more than 1,540 of them. Armored personal carriers, 1,100 units, more than 900 vehicles with anti-mine protection. Ukraine also received more than 400 tanks from Poland, the Czech Republic and Slovenia. 300 infantry fighting vehicles and the same number of towered howitzers. And our soldiers are constantly learning how to use modern weapons, and they not only learn how to use them, but also find new, modern ways of using them. The Ukrainians are absolutely astounding at learning new systems very quickly and putting them to good use, and even modifying them for uses that go beyond what what we thought they were capable of. And that's one of the things that I think makes it so valuable for American equipment to be in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are also inventing a whole new way of war. And this is something that will absolutely, if, if the United States takes advantage of it, it will absolutely change the tactics, techniques, and procedures that the United States uses in battle. Therefore, the provision of modern weapons will only help Ukraine and the whole world to eliminate the danger from the Russian Federation as soon as possible. After all, if the Russian troops go wild and take over Ukraine, who knows where they will stop? In Warsaw, Berlin or maybe even in Lisbon. And while support for Ukraine is growing day by day, fewer and fewer countries want to do business with Russia. Now, Russia receives less support from China. According to Financial Times sources close to the Chinese government, Putin is losing the trust of the Chinese leadership because he did not warn Xi Jinping about his plans to invade Ukraine. 
Moreover, 20 days before the start of the war, he discussed the possibility of a reaction in the case of an attack on Russian territory, but did not discuss an attack by the Russian army on a neighboring country. The Financial Times claims that Beijing underestimated the extent of the Russian invasion. In confirmation of this, the newspaper recalls the demotion of the former deputy foreign minister of the People's Republic of China and the ministry's leading expert on Russia, Li Yunchen. He was called a candidate for the position of a minister of foreign affairs, and now he holds the position of deputy head of the state radio broadcasting and television administration. China is one of the few countries among the world leaders that have not joined the sanctions against Russia. At the same time, Beijing emphasizes that it advocates a peaceful resolution on the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. The Chinese acknowledged their miscalculations and decided to make measures that would correct their position. But at the official level, we don't see this yet, and I do not think that we will observe it. The Chinese feel like Russians have not been completely honest with them, and this means that it is difficult to trust the other side. Instead, China currently has serious internal problems. Economic growth for 2022 amounted to about 3 percent, although the plans were almost twice as much. And for the first time in 60 years, China's population has decreased. Therefore, we can affirm about the economic and demographic problems in China. And that is why Beijing should now focus on internal problems, in addition to those arising in the world geopolitics. Russia remains an important partner in China's global ambitions because the competition between the U.S. and China has not gone away. It softens because neither side wants war and they understand that no one wants a conflict. The world does not want this war either, but China's desire to occupy its own niche of global power to create an alternative that would oppose the United States, of course, they want it. Therefore, they rely on Russian help. However, Xi Jinping cannot ignore Putin's actions. This is especially true of nuclear weapons. After all, most likely it was the conversations with Chinese and Indian politicians that caused the reduction of nuclear blackmail from Russia. Because the more often nuclear threats sound in the world, the faster countries will try to get such weapons for themselves. And if Taiwan or South Korea gets such weapons, it will become worse for Beijing. After all, then it will be necessary to spend much more resources monetary, intellectual, diplomatic, to ensure security in the region. Now we are waiting for news from China after U.S. Secretary of State Blinken's visit to Beijing. Among other issues, he will discuss Ukraine on February 5th or the 6th. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for future videos. Subscribe to UATV English and goodbye.